Jed Smock is doubling down as of late on his deliberate apostasy that he's been promoting for years. In December, he boldly nominated himself for Ecumenist of the Year. And he cites that he's for all open-air preachers an avid defender of Joel Osteen and includes the Roman Catholic Church as a Christian institution. So right there, that's enough to indict the man as a heretic, which is why this video carries the hashtag Reject Jed. That's based on Titus 3, 10, and 11. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Now he defends a lot more, more heretics and wicked deceivers than just Joel Osteen and the good old RCC. But it's really sad to me, it's really with a heavy heart that I see these things as an open-air preacher myself, that plants like smock, um, planted by the enemy to discredit open-air preachers and draw many people into apostasy. I mean, he's just blatantly, overtly promoting the apostate church, the apostate system, and everything that's leading to the one world religion. So my call is to those that are still standing idly by, maybe even in fellowship still with this man, or preaching with him, not speaking up and calling him out for what he is, uh, my call is to those that are still going to defend him to repent themselves because you're justifying the wicked. You've traded in the fear of God for the fear of man. And we'll see that as we go through the slides here. Um, so it's that purpose and as well as just doing my duty to expose the unfruitful works of darkness, reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. And so I'll handle this if you want to read every single word of his Facebook posts and how he's defending his Catholic overtones and so on. Uh, I'll just give you a cue when I'm going to change slides so that you can pause the video if you want. I'll just tell you next slide as we move along. So with that, we'll move on to the next slide. So just a few snapshots of the things associated with what he's promoting. You have Pope Francis and the, you know, the Roman Catholic Church is Christian, according to Judd Smock. Okay? You have a Pope who's assuring atheists you don't have to believe in God to go to heaven, supporting the sodomite agenda here, LGBT plus plus whatever. Uh, suggesting that the church could even be open to civil unions. Here he is, uh, the Pope performs just flagrant satanic ritual worship continually. I mean, he does this all the time, offering incense to the Queen of Heaven, right here. They call Mary the Queen of Heaven. This is their, what they call veneration. It's worship of Mary. And... Scripture here, as I referenced, you're an abomination to the Lord if you justify the wicked and condemn the just. So God's word has warned those who would be in fellowship with such as Jed Smock or Jed Smock himself, of course, what he's doing. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, Isaiah 5.20, Proverbs 17.15 respectively. Here's one of his favorites, well, two of his favorites right here. Norman Vincent Peale, the predecessor to these modern-day heretics. And Joel Osteen. Peale had his message, How to Enjoy the Best Things in Life. 
he's uh, was Donald Trump's pastor. He said it's not necessary to be born again. You have your way to God, I have mine. Christ is one of the ways. Joel Osteen with his buddy Oprah. Oprah asks, will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it? Joel, well, I believe they will. It's his own words. Then, of course, Billy Graham, Robert Schuller, a couple more that he has defended and calls legitimate Christian leaders. Billy Graham said there's a tremendous hope that people have if you're Islamic. Suppose you die on the battlefield fighting for Islam. The promises they give you for the first thousand years would make any young man say, well, I think that's what I'd like to have. Yes, Billy Graham said that. There's a video posted on this YouTube channel, God Sees It. Billy Graham endorses Islam. If you want to see the video footage of that. Also, uh, there's a video titled, Billy Graham Denies Jesus Christ on this channel. This is a quote from that video footage. Uh, he said that the Muslim, Buddhist, non-believer are saved, members of the body of Christ, going to be in heaven with us. Going to be with us in heaven, he says. Muslims, Buddhists, just plain old non-believers, they're going to be in heaven with us and they're members of the body of Christ. And his old buddy here, Robert Schuller, says, This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There's a wideness in God's mercy. Yep, they're promoting the wide way. Can you believe a man claiming to be preacher of righteousness, open-air preacher, preaching on campuses for decades, Smock is promoting. This is Christian. This is Christian. These people are Christians. Next slide. Firstly, regarding his support of Billy Graham, he has a post here, Billy Graham and G.B. Shaw. Looks like a typo that should say, I assume have been blessed with long life. One thing about Graham, he put together a faithful team of men that remain loyal to him throughout his long and productive ministry. Isn't it so productive promoting doctrines of devils deceiving millions of people? Certainly. And he says, carry on good Christian gentlemen, Billy, George, and Cliff. Here he says, Mr. Shea gained worldwide fame after receiving Jesus as Savior and Lord. This was his birthday post. He died a few months later. He continues to say here, though, I fear the world will never see again anything like a Billy Graham crusade. George, Billy, and Cliff, the great triumvirate of evangelism. Triumvirate is a distinctly Roman term. You're going to see this theme with him, how he speaks in these Roman terms continually. Just a part of the deal. i get back to this one in a second. Uh, down here from his website, said Billy Graham has retired from mass evangelism after following the examples of Billy Sunday and D.L. Moody. These men were successful in catching a multitude in their day. Yes, Billy Graham, successful in catching a multitude in the net of false doctrines, counterfeit gospel, leading shamefully many to hell. So that's a success that Jed is promoting. And he's not ignorant of these heresies, by the way. He's been called out hundreds of times over and over again. This is a post from one lengthy attempt at reproving him for supporting Billy Graham and other wickedness. And Jed posts that I prefer, especially among the open-air preachers, to find areas of agreement 
whether it be with the Calvinists, Catholics, Old Line Protestants, Fundamentalists, Pentecostals, or those who believe in entire sanctification in this life and those who don't. By the way, I still respect Billy Graham. My standard for determining whether or not I can be in fellowship is the Apostles' Creed. So, we'll come back to that in a second, but let's look quickly at the Apostles' Creed. And you'll see this is a theme he likes to throw out. He likes to mention this often, the Apostles' Creed. This is his standard, whether he can be in fellowship with somebody. It says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Now I wonder if you noticed two really important loopholes in this why Jed can just use this as kind of a smoke screen. First of all, Unitarians have no problem with confessing this. It doesn't mention and affirm the Godhood of Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. Notice that? So Unitarians would confess something like this with no problem. And Universalists would also do you notice just the forgiveness of sins? All those counterfeit grace promoters where everybody's going to be forgiven? It just says the forgiveness of sins. That very important term repentance is nowhere to be found, is it? So all of these universalist heretics have no problem confessing the Apostles' Creed. And therefore, it's Jed's fallback. He loves to mention that often. Next slide. So here on Facebook, uh, he has a Catholic chiming in, telling him he's a breath of fresh air. You're a breath of fresh air, Brother Smock, from the Catholic here. And defending the crucifix symbol and Jed's agreeing with him, defending the crucifix. Of course, he carries that Catholic crucifix on a staff with him, as many of you might have seen. And then he uses the, some interesting words here that a lot of, uh, a lot of the heretics, uh, Osteen and T.D. Jakes, like to promote that, you know, uh, they, they'll say, oh, Jesus is, is the, the one way to God, the only way to God. But then there are various ways to Christ. He's the one way to the Father, but then there are various ways to Christ. It's a very popular thing to kind of help them skirt the blatant universalism that Norman Vincent Peale promoted. But they're just, it's the same thing, just different way. And so he says... <clears throat> You know, he found, he found him, found the Lord at Burger King, and others find Christ through the sacraments. <clears throat> through the sacraments. Some through Protestantism, some through Catholicism. And even, again, the sacraments. The sacraments. The sacraments are Jesus Christ's presence in us, according to Pope Francis. So it is important for us to go to confession and receive Holy Communion. Confession, of course, the satanic doctrine of the Catholic Church that says your priest is the moderator, mediator between you and God, taking the place of Jesus Christ. And here is, of course, their, quote, Holy Communion. you got the monstrance here, which is a symbol of the sun god because the Catholic Church is the Babylonian system of worship and and the, the wafer here, where they say that uh, Jesus Christ, if you're not aware of this doctrine, that he 
comes down and his body is literally put to death. He's literally crucified over and over again with the mass. Doctrines of devils, and of course, Jed Smock promoting it. Sorry. Warning, next slide. So here he says he's for all open-air preachers except those who interrupt his meetings. And he didn't mention the name of the preacher here, but he's one of the few preachers publicly exposing him, so that's why he's for all open-air preachers except the guy who exposes him. Next slide. And so, here he is endorsing again pastors of various denominations, the independents, and Catholic priests. I am for them. I'm for the Catholic priests. God is on the side of them all. Did you know that? God's on the side of the incense to Queen of Heaven idol worshipers and the TV preachers. I mean, he just puts them all in there. I wonder, who are the false teachers of today, according to Jet? If you take all of TBN, Daystar, and CBN, all those, all those TV preachers, he's, he's defended them. And he says that Joel Osteen, because he's, he's going to have to defend Joel because Joel won't do it himself. You know, God's raised him up as, as the defender of Joel Osteen, according to his own words. Um, Joel Osteen is introducing more people to Christ than perhaps any man alive. Joel, is that right? Homosexuals will be in heaven? He's introducing more people to Christ than anyone. And this sadly shows the influence of other young preachers. Jeremiah here is saying uh, he's working at being inclusive like Jed. Still working at it. This is sad. I hope, uh, you know, I, 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 some names will come up. You know, you posted your public uh, comments on Facebook, so that's why I didn't hesitate including people in here. You know, some people are going to be rebuking it. Some people are going along with it. Um, those of you, if you're, you know, you appear in some of these slides from your public Facebook comments and you've changed your position, I pray you do. Uh, some of the defenders endorsers of Jed, just let me know, message me at the channel here, and I will put up a special video citing your change of position to clarify that. Next. All right, so here is somebody trying to reprove his defense of the Catholic Church and uh, the mystery Babylon description revelation 17 and then jed pulls a very common smoke screen here that uh he says well the vatican is outside the seven hills of rome because you know it's the 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 seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth and and she's the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth well then Vatican is outside, so, you know, that's a diversion to remove the indictment against the Catholic Church, right? But I want you to key in on this one here, Salient Hill. After, of course, well, let's mention that he says if it's a reference to Rome, is it pagan Rome or Christian Rome, Catholic? Christian and Catholic. There he goes again. So, yes, it is obviously Rome, and you don't separate the Catholic system from the whore city. Here's historical uh, fact to uh, eliminate this smoke screen where they moved the Vatican. You know, they, they established the Vatican outside the Seven Hills. Big deal. The Lateran Palace, an ancient palace of the Roman Empire, gifted by Constantine in 313 A.D. to be the main papal residence. Located St. John's Square in Lateran on the Salian Hill. So this hill right here. 
Constantine gave this palace to be the main papal residence, the, the residence of the Pope, and it was for about a thousand years after that. Adjacent to it is the oldest and highest ranking of the four papal major basilicas, given it the unique title of Archbasilica because it is the oldest public church in the city of Rome and houses the Cathedra of the Roman Bishop. It has the title of Ecumenical Mother Church of the Catholic Faithful. Ecumenical Mother Church of the Catholic Faithful is on Salian Hill. So no, there's no diversion to remove the indictment who the Whore of Babylon clearly is. And even if you didn't have that specific uh, description and all that I mean uh, we have the obvious heresies to go on and the apostasy there next slide <clears throat> so here he's questioning what should Protestants attitude relationship be with Catholics should we consider them as lost idolaters and then he cites Charles Finney uh, being one of his greatest influences and in that Charles Finney had uh, some sort of friendship with a Catholic priest and talks about how he was trying, this Catholic priest was trying to accomplish in the Roman Catholic Church what I was endeavoring to accomplish in the Protestant Church. Again, this was during Charles G. Finney's ministry. He said, Mr. Walworth seems to be an earnest minister of Christ. So Charles Finney declared this priest to be a true Christian and a true legitimate minister. So, Jed, making his appeal, fallacious appeal to authority of Charles Finney, said he, Notice Finney did not refer to Mr. Woolworth as a hell-bound sinner, nor did he say, If he's truly converted, he will come out of that whore. So what? Who cares what Charles Finney says? See, again, that's the perfect example of fallacious appeal to authority there, which Jed Smock knows how to argue that. He's argued that against uh, professors and collegiate students alike for years against their attacks on the Bible, so-called defending the Bible. And then he does this. And here was a um, post where he tags his one of his daughters, says, I remember when you were a girl, maybe around 10, one of the most prominent members, uh, one of the prominent members of our church, at the time got on your case for being sympathetic to the Catholics. Do you remember that? How old were you then? And also recall and mention one of your Catholic chaplains was perhaps the most spiritual man you met in the chaplain's corps where you served as an assistant. Was that the same chaplain who gave us a personal tour of the Catholic Cathedral in Washington, D.C.? So she's answering him as Father Matt and how apparently Father Matt was, according to his memory, she was saying he was the most spiritual man you met. And anyway, here's an example of how for decades, for years, he's been corrupting his children, uh, promoting apostasy. For years, you'll see more uh, on that to come. And his church, he's talking about the members of the church, now, I know, unless this has changed just very recently, he's been submitted to a woman pastor at the United Methodist Church for years. And all these preachers who are outside Methodist churches rebuking them from, for their sodomite sympathy stances and promotion of the sodomite agenda and all these wicked abominations, um, and then they're holding up Jed as one of the best there is. Next slide. And so more promotion of uh, the Catholic satanic system here in this specifically about uh, adoring the Blessed Virgin Mary. Look at how he capitalizes Blessed Virgin Mary. Blessed Virgin Mary and her her hymn Magnificat and He's, he has these posts, he's, he's capitalizing the mother, the mother of sorrows, Mother Mary, 
I mean, he's just speaking completely in the Catholic language. You know, this is one of their heresies, Blessed Virgin Mary. She was a virgin, and the Lord appeared to her, said she would conceive Savior. Uh, she didn't remain a virgin. She had other children. The Catholics hold her up as the Queen of Heaven and Perpetual Virgin and Our Mother, etc., etc. And then Jed says, Would our salvation even have been possible without her consent and cooperation with the Holy Spirit? She imparted unto Jesus his human nature, her blood flowing through his veins. Even though the scripture tells us he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and uh, Mary did not sovereignly bring about our salvation and make it possible as if it wouldn't have been possible, as if God would have been hopeless without Mary if she didn't obey. Next slide. Okay, now we have the conversation regarding what I showed you in one of the slide, the, the second slide there with offering incense to the Queen of Heaven idol and how that's how they worship or venerate what they call veneration of Mary. He just flat out endorses veneration of Mary. Defending that worship just means to account worth to. So, no problem with their veneration of, I don't see their veneration of Mary as a particular problem. Let's see that again, just a picture of that. That is veneration of Mary, incense to the Queen of Heaven. According to Jed, no problem. And here's what happens if you're being discipled by Jed. You had Joshua here who was uh, discipled by him open-air preaching with him. He's now converted to Catholicism and literally some of the lowest depths of the belief system where he's openly promoting Mary as co-redemptrix and mediatrix. That's his post. And then, of course, you know, Brent here is trying to, I don't know who this is, but it's just somebody trying to reprove him, saying that this is, he started conversation, you know, trying to expose some of the wicked things of Catholicism that he's promoting, and points out that um, Catholic Bible has removed the second commandment, which is true. If you want to see that, I have a video on that uh, called Are There Two Sets of Ten Commandments on this channel as well. You can search for. Well, Jed just dismisses it as, if I'm looking for problem doctrines, I can find them in any church. Unknowingly, I may have some problem doctrines. I am sure several on this thread think that I do. Well, that's for sure. Um... But, you know, incensed idols, idol worship. Yeah, you know, problem doctrines, you can find them anywhere. Next slide. So, some of the problem, just, you know, little insignificant problem doctrines by the Pope here. And this is our hope. We are not orphans. We have mothers, Mother Mary. But the church is mother. And the mother church is anointed when it takes the same path of Jesus and Mary, the path of obedience, the path of suffering. And when she has that attitude of continually learning the path of the Lord, these two women, Mary and the church, carry on the hope that is Christ. They give us Christ. They bring forth Christ in us. Without Mary, there would be no Jesus Christ. That sounds familiar. Wasn't that what Jed was intimating? 
would our salvation even be possible without Mary's consent? Without Mary, there would be no Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. Without the church, we cannot go forward. Here he is kissing the Queen of Heaven, idol. Visiting Naples in March, Pope Francis told priests and seminarians, one way to make sure Jesus is the center of their life is to ask his mother to take you to him. Yep, she's the mediatrix, remember? A priest, a brother, a nun who does not love Mary, who does not pray to her. See, all those people who like to say, oh, they don't really pray to Mary. No, according to the Pope, the head of your church, you pray to her. Anyone who does not cite, recite the rosary. Well, if you don't love the mother, the mother will not give you the son. They clearly make her God. All right, next slide. So he declared the year of mercy. Mary attests that the mercy of the Son of God knows no bounds and extends to everyone without exception. There's total flagrant universalism by Pope Franny. Let us address her in the words of Salve Regina. Hail, Holy Queen. Queen of Heaven. Prayer ever ancient and new that she never tire of turning her merciful eyes toward us and make us worthy to contemplate the face of mercy, her son Jesus. So it's Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Some of you might not have know how they, known how they literally replace Jesus Christ with the Queen of Heaven. Because it's, you know, Isis, Simiramis, whatever it, incarnation has been the Queen of Heaven progressing through thousands of years of idolatry, this is theirs. It's not Mother Mary anyway, it's just they substitute the name and that's how Constantine brought in the Babylonian system. So turn then, O most gracious advocate. Here's their advocate, Queen of Heaven. And what did Jed Smock say? What does he unashamedly proclaim? This is Christian. Jed Smock says this is Christian. Next. All right, so here he's making the appeal. He's 75 years old, and he's reproving all of the younger preachers for not respecting him as an elder like they should. Since I've been writing on Facebook in defense of Joel Osteen and making sympathetic remarks concerning the Roman Catholic Church. Well, Jed, Jimmy Carter, I believe he's older than you. We're not going to honor him as an elder. I believe he's still a pastor of a church. So just because you're older doesn't mean you're a Christian elder. If you're a heretic, we have a responsibility of calling you out, rejecting you as a heretic. Next slide. Okay, here is where he is declaring how Constantine... Among the greatest of Christian leaders. And then President Trump has the potential to be a leader as great as Constantine, who will not only make America great again, but be instrumental in awakening the church. <laughs> All right, you'll see coming up here a few points on that. But Constantine is the reason we have this on display. Constantine merged his paganism with the church by offering all the things he offered to the bishops and their corruption. So yes, uh, Trump may be like Constantine, as in he's an idolater too. We'll see more to come. Next slide. And here 
he talks about how the church should be a lot more like Constantine and we should have much pageantry and you know not these small home fellowships and you know we need the victor's mindset of leaders like Constantine the Great, President Trump and Pastor Joel Osteen and then Christian losers just have their little small home fellowships instead of the great cathedrals as Constantine had and then instead of warriors after God's own heart like King David Constantine and President Trump they would make pastors barely eke out a living while pastoring their little flocks in obscurity or maybe they just won't allow God haters to be members of their churches so you can have thousands of people like Joel Osteen who says he has homosexual members and so forth so Trump Constantine just like King David Trump and King David in the same breath and Trump need to be more like again more like his his influence in the political realm and like Joel Osteen in the religious world by encouraging Christians to be men of influence and prosperity in the realm of business education etc even sports yeah even sports which all 100 percent are promoting the sodomite agenda now as well and false Christianity oh man it it abounds in sports it's everybody's everybody's a Christian just when you say you're a Christian next slide so he's asking you know does it does it really make you a false teacher if you're preaching false things and and uh, I suppose any Calvinist could call an Arminian a false prophet or vice versa any Catholic could call a Protestant a heretic you know it's just all kind of relativism we all have our traditions and I don't know anyone who goes strictly by what is written if he does I fear he is missing the opportunity to hear the voice of God wow I wonder if he thinks Bill Johnson is a real Christian too or Kenneth Copeland I'm sure he does <clears throat> Actually, he, he identifies himself with the Word of Faith, a.k.a. Word of Fake movement. So I'm sure he likes Copeland and the like, but this sounds a lot like Bill Johnson. You know, if you just adhere to the written Word, you're going to miss the opportunity to hear the voice of God. Next slide. All right, now we have his... Endorsement of Norman Vincent Peale, President Trump's primary spiritual mentor. Gives a little history and the power of positive thinking and, and uh, art of living. Inspired, possibly, Trump's art of the deal. He was, again, you see this, this all... Sounds like, hey, enjoying everyday life, your best life now, and all of that good stuff. So that's why he's the, the, the father of modern heretics, which you'll see on some of these other teachers uh, preceding this video post, and shortly after, I'll have some other videos regarding Norman Vincent Peale, a little more on Joel Osteen, and some others that he's promoting. And they're already a lot up on the Catholic Church of course we're going really light on the Catholic Church we need to step that up that's the head of the apostasy so we need to be openly rebuking that so Trump said to campaign rally in Iowa how he's still remembering this unbelievable sermons and raving about his 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 sermons Norman Vincent Peale he said he could listen to him all day long because what he promoted was believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, your best life now. And he says, uh, Peel thought I was his greatest student of all time. 
Jed goes on to say other notable disciples of Peel are Robert Schuler, possibility thinking, Joel Osteen, of course, and Paula White. Sister White, he says, has been a contemporary influence on Trump and a longtime friend of the president. And uh, Dr. James Dobson claimed that she is the one who prayed with Trump for his salvation, for the salvation of his soul. Paula White is mainly responsible for initially bringing a group of Christian leaders together to pray for Trump and encourage him to run for president. She was the first Pentecostal to pray at a presidential inauguration. Something to aim for. And then you have uh, Rudolph over here who just wants everybody to know that anyone who's known you over the years knows that you've always defended Joel Osteen types. You vigorously defended Robert Schuler and Norman Vincent Peale. And he gives a big thanks to his friend Rudolph Jim. Thank you very much for making this point and copying it to my other Joel posts. It's important to uh, that my critics know this. I've mentioned it before on Facebook, but an old-timer like yourself confirming this fact is helpful. At least they know that I am a long-time heretic. Then this is interesting. My parents were personal friends with the Peels long before they became famous. I visited the Crystal Cathedral numer numerous times over the years. I once heard Schuler preach against adultery for about 10 minutes at a Christmas Eve service, no less. Well, there you go. He's not a heretic then. And so, <clears throat> old Rudolph, another guy who has known this for years and yet has traded in the fear of God for the fear of man because he's not rejecting him, rejecting the heretic or calling him out. Next slide, let's look at Sister White here. Briefly, Sister White. First, she's an apostle and pastor, uh, just slightly in conflict with the Word of God. 1 Timothy 2, we should know. Here's where Paula was busted with Benny Hinn, uh, when, because Benny Hinn was appointed by the Vatican to be a patron of the arts. So they were seen coming out hand in hand out of a swanky hotel in Rome. Yep, he apologized, so everything's okay. Here she is, as I've said um, in the video, how to spot a heretic in 60 seconds or less. All you have to do is look for the Catholic connection. Here's Cardinal Dolan right behind her at the inauguration praying and spiritual advisor to Trump she says I know that president-elect Trump has a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ okay he said he never asked God for forgiveness later he said after somebody tried to call him on that oh yeah I'll, I'll do that he says I'll ask God for forgiveness but hopefully I don't have too much forgiveness to ask for he says and uh, he set a precedent, <clears throat> one of his casinos in Atlantic City, the first one to have a strip club. He has nude dancers in the one in uh, Vegas, too, I believe it is. Adultery, fornication, plenty of profanity. And why is his presidency so groundbreaking and unprecedented? First president in history who was elected, who campaigned in full support, of homosexual marriage. The most abominable oxymoron there is, right? Full sodomite agenda supporter. Oh, and uh, triple X porn on demand in his hotels, by the way. Except two in the Deep South. Interesting fact. They don't have the triple X there in the Deep South Trump hotels. So he can maintain his evangelical supporters, maybe. And then here's Paula with her rock star husband from the band Journey and some of the filthy lyrics that they sing on stage. But, yep, there she is, according to Jed, Sister White. Next slide. And would you believe 
that now on another thread I am contending for the soul of Joyce Meyer against those who regard her as accursed, damned? I'd believe it. They especially condemn her for teaching that Jesus descended into hell and allegedly died spiritually and was born again in hell. I disagree with her payment theory of the atonement. However, I don't believe that such a belief necessarily damns a soul to hell. Well, he likes that she says she's not a sinner. Well, she is a sinner. She's still in the same conflict as Paula White with taking authoritative teaching roles in the church. But uh, she said that you're not going to heaven unless you believe this, by the way. Don't know if Jed missed that. And again, that will be, just look for the video on this channel about Joyce Meyer for more details on that. You know, you have no hope of going to heaven if you don't believe uh, what she was teaching about Jesus going and paying our payment in hell, burning in hell, being tortured in hell, um, that he did that. It wasn't finished on the cross that, you know, that's a typical word of faker doctrine. I won't delve into it anymore at this point. But she also just promotes the seeker-sensitive, uh, you know, Catholic, charismatic spin on the gospel that, that God has no wrath and judgment um, over the sinner as they are in their sin. She has a book entitled, God is Not Mad at You. So just a couple of points. On the heretic Joyce Meyer, next slide. <clears throat> and here he's posting on one of his favorite entertainers, or three of them, Ernie, Johnny, and June, and talking about he looks forward to meeting them on Resurrection Day. We'll have a new body and new life with Johnny Cash in heaven, according to Jet. And this is just uh, another example of uh, promoting apostate, you know, uh, pseudo Christianity, counterfeit Christianity. Anyone who says they're Christian is Christian. That's what he's promoting. With Johnny Cash, just as an example here, these are two bands. At the end of Johnny Cash's life, he was covering songs from the likes of Nine Inch Nails and Soundgarden here. Nine Inch Nails, the name Nine Inch Nails was blaspheming Jesus Christ as their belief of the precise length of the nails of crucifixion. Nine Inch Nails. And he covered the song, Johnny Cash sang this, out of the song Hurt. Johnny Cash's lyrics that he actually added these, he changed these lyrics to say this, I wear this crown of thorns upon my liar's chair. That's Johnny Cash, the Christian, who Jed is going to see in heaven, he says. And then, again, that wasn't even Nine Inch Nails lyric. They had like a four-letter word in there, and so he changed it to this. Crown of thorns upon my liar's chair. Well, Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, and you're the liar, Johnny. And this is uh, <clears throat> Satan oscillate my metallic sonatas, the forwards and backwards saying of the spinning wheel of mystery, satanic, whatever garbage you want to call it, by the band Soundgarden. Just a couple of the bands, again, showing the kind of Christianity that the apostate generation promotes. And so many of these people, like Jed Smock, oh, you know, Johnny Cash sang hymns, and he's a Christian. Yeah, Elvis sang hymns, so he was a Christian. But then he makes the point, he's, he's trying to get across that we shouldn't, he's citing scripture not to put a stumbling block or judge your brother, and so he's saying, mind our own business. Aren't we all stumbling over certain doctrines? Yes, we look through glass darkly, but no, uh, we're not supposed to be stumbling when we're walking in the light. So there's just another example of his relativism. And here he says, The Lord has raised me up to be Joel Osteen's defender. 
and is evidenced by 52,000 weekly attendance at his church, the, the attendance number at his church, that uh, this proves that he's loved by so many. And Trump is God's political figure in the hour to make America great again. Osteen, with his message of hope and optimism, is God's man of the hour to make the church once again the foremost institution of, uh, in America. Keeps getting deeper. And here he was when he went to visit Joel, proudly shaking his hand, getting his autograph and his book next And he's talking about proudly standing in front of the statue. They have a nice graven image of John and Dodie, the parents of Joel, at the church. And he's mimicking the pose himself. And he talked about John, how his dad identified with the charismatic movement more than classic Pentecostals. Yep, charismatic is the Catholic Church just uh just a tongue speaking, you know, uh branch of the Catholic Church. Not and I'm not talking about biblical speaking in tongues and the proper doctrine of that. I'm talking about the charismatic movement full of doctrines of devils, the word of faith, word of fake, you know, Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland. Um, that's what the, uh, tree that the apple hasn't fallen far from, uh, was planted in. That was his father. Here they are again, in front of the statue. Next. Pastor Joel is not only a man of God, he's a man of the people. More pictures from his visit. He talked about, uh, Joel asks you not to leave early, but they did anyway, so they would be first in line afterwards when everybody uh, gets their moment to kiss up to him after the service. And he talked about uh, Pat, who was with them, who was you know moves more slowly. She was toward the end of the line, and then said how she was from Terre Haute, Indiana, and Joel said, oh, I met a couple from Terre Haute earlier in the line. This is evidence he was really listening to the people. Joel has an unusual memory. Wow, it's like he's running out of ways to kiss up to him and getting really desperate there. Next. Alright, so it talks about uh, Joel's wonderful delivery of his sermons. Beginning of his sermon, he leads the, you know, this is my Bible, I am what it says I am, etc., etc., right? You've probably seen that if you've ever seen him. Start his service. Going back to his father's pastorate has become a part of the Lakewood Liturgy. Another Catholic term there. After that, he does not hold the Bible or read from a particular passage. Yep, God's foremost leader, right? Always gives an altar call at the end of each address, calling for repentance. And his, his repentance is the one, two, three, repeat after me sinner's prayer, by the way. It's pathetic, and it's just wicked. He's making this out to be a call to repentance. And, oh, if he's a false teacher, uh, what about your pastor, he says. Another one of Jed's disciples, it's a shame of watching people just follow him headlong into this insane wickedness. Went to Lakewood Church in Houston with Pastor Joel Osteen talking about bad company and people that ruin our lives and getting away from them, he said, along the lines of people tell me, but Joel, what if I offend them? It's better to do that than miss your destiny. Unbelievable street preachers buying into this. Hope some people get with it and repent. Next slide. Okay, so he's citing Joel apologized to his interviews and, you know, the Larry King thing where he skirted the 
the issue of Jesus. He hedged on Jesus being the only way of salvation. So he apologized, and it's okay. Joel's less forthright on hot-button issues than he, he might be because he wants to remain focused on his message. So he's defending him how he just literally promotes apostasy on public television, how he's been doing it for years. And then he compares what Joel does <clears throat> by skirting the hot-button issues and just repeatedly saying how oh, God's not judging homosexuals, Jesus, oh, is skirting, he's the only way. He compares that to Jesus and dealing with the woman caught in adultery. Really sick. And then he says, part of my goal in defending Joel is to connect the serpent role with Joel's dove, because he's, you know, he's saying he's like wise as the serpent, and Joel's just being as harmless as a dove, that's all. And how when they see Joel's offer of grace, mercy, and forgiveness, Souls are saved. Souls are saved by the most wicked false teacher, arguably, in Protestant circles in the world today. Next. Again, God has raised me up to defend Joel. And he is saying that uh, if anyone ever there was ever a man in our generation who exemplifies Jesus' admonition to turn the other cheek. It is Joel Osteen. So, Jed has to be, you know, raised up. God has raised me up to defend Joel. And then he says, actually, if you have not read at least one of Joel's books and heard at least a half a dozen of his sermons, your criticism carries little weight. Yeah, well, I haven't heard a half a dozen sermons of... Jeremiah Wright, or really Louis Farrakhan, or even Billy Graham. Don't need to. Heretic's a heretic, and he's even trying to get some of the detractors to read his books and listen to his sermons. Interesting. Next. So here he's saying that, you know, he's defending, you know, how could I support Joel Osteen? Well, Joel's target audience is different. He's, he's knowing his audience. Joel is targeting honest seekers after truth and are looking for a better life through faith in God. Because that's the gospel, a better life, right? And he says, I prefer to use old-fashioned theological terms. Joel is often saying the same thing as I, but he uses modern terminology and often avoids old-fashioned biblical language. That is certainly true. I do have a ministry to churches as a guest speaker, Jed says. I often avoid the vulgarities and crudeness in church which I daily stoop to on campus. Both in church and on campus, I encourage people to live their best life now by obeying God, which results in fulfillment, whereas the end result of living independently of God is emptiness. At least he admits how he stoops daily to vulgarities. Next slide. And here again, he's comparing Joel's audience with his and how they're different, and that's why the message is different. And, you know, that's why I'm defending the guy who never preaches on hell because he's just targeting the convicted sinner of Romans 7.15. Well, he says these things about why he doesn't preach on hell, people feel guilty enough already. And to me, the gospel is good news. I'd rather say God is a God of mercy. But why don't we say both like Jesus did? See, he uses the false dichotomy. 
Like you, have, you either have to preach one or the other. So I think the people already know they're doing wrong, and I certainly believe in hell, but to me, when I see thousands of people before me, it just doesn't come out of me to say, you guys are terrible, and you're going to hell. I'd rather say God is a God of mercy. You've got to live an obedient life, but for every mistake you made, there's mercy there, and I believe we can do better. Okay. So there's the false dichotomy. See, you either say it's just God of mercy, or you say, you guys are terrible, you're going to hell. See how they use that little slick, fallacious reasoning there. False dichotomy. Jed describes his audience as different. That's why he preaches on hell. And, and interesting comment. Jed says, when I visited Joel's church, I sized up his congregation. I did not perceive anyone who appeared to be gay. So Jed sized up over 50,000 people and he determined nobody was gay. Well, Joel says he has homosexual members. I just thought this was just another point of complete lunacy here. Next slide. It's where when he visited Lakewood, he sensed a powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. That tells you what spirit Jed is sensing. Next. So here again, he's, <clears throat> he's saying, you know, you have to read Joel's books. He keeps saying this. You have to read Joel's books to, if, if you want to respond in a reasonable manner. And then he says he's been advised by Cindy and others that he needs to be purging his friends list because of all these people rebuking the apostasy, calling out heretics. Keeps wanting to send you back to Joel's books. Next. All right, so here's one guy who got blocked. Leonard was rebuking him, like I would expect any street preacher really to do in response of what he is doing. I don't know why there's so few doing this. I do know that you've traded in the fear of God for the fear of man if you're still going to endorse the man after all of this. And he says, where, where is the street preacher's? And so he's asking, that's what I'm asking, where are the street preachers to warn you of this poison you're promoting? Fixing their cheerleader pom-poms. Sadly, that's widely true. Obviously there are some. I commend those that are speaking out and reproving, but I call you to repentance if you are trying to stand by a heretic. Because you put yourself squarely under the judgment of God, being a respecter of persons. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, you'll sin for a piece of bread. You'll transgress if you have the respect of persons. Very dangerous. Stop it and address what Joel is teaching in his book or you'll be blocked. I'm trying real hard to get people to read those books. And now he says, I blocked Leonard Michael. He continued posting old TV clips of Osteen when I asked him not to. He's like so many of Joel's critics who refused to actually address his basic teaching from his sermons and books. Osteen is not above criticism, and I welcome constructive criticism. I've answered Joel's bad interviews with Larry King on Facebook over and over again. I suspect few of Joel's detractors have ever actually listened to or read the man. Well, I have. I used to be a pew warming bonehead in the old, you know, the charismatic gobbledygook myself. I used to listen to him. I used to watch him. And it's easy to spot if you have a dime's worth of discernment. So he, and he always refers to this Larry King, Larry King. There's more than Larry King. The witchcraft promoting new age queen of media herself, Oprah Winfrey. Take that. He teaches in her, quote, life classes. And as I showed, uh, he's not trying to spin Dr. Oprah's interviews, I guess, as I showed there in the beginning. What about this one? Did you answer this one? Will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it?
Well, I believe they will. So, <clears throat> there you have it. Just deliberate apostasy. There's no excuse. There's no spin. And once again, I call anyone who is still standing by this heretic to do what the Bible commands and reject Jed. Don't choose the fear of man over the fear of God. Whatever consequences you think are coming, if you do the right thing, and reject the man who is about a thousand times past the second admonition, by the way. He's way beyond this, and he's not repented. So, you choose the fear of man over the fear of God, you've got a lot more consequences than whatever you think is going to happen. Financial consequences, fellowship consequences, you're not going to be invited somewhere because of rejecting Jed. I strongly urge you with all my heart, as an open-air preacher to get back to the fear of God. It's sad when these things happen and it's with a heavy heart. As I said, I, I hate to see this happening, but we're commanded to do what's right according to the Word of God. And this is hoping that you will. Till next time, to the Lord Jesus Christ, be all the glory. Amen.